We're going to uh, show everybody a video. Michaela was going to play on her viola. Her strings broke, so she couldn't play it, so we had to do it from up there. But y'all, uh, we'll watch this video. <laughs>
Congratulations. We have one 5K graduate. Mason, you're just starting, buddy. <laughs> you got a long way ahead, but congratulations on uh, graduating 5K. And continue to work hard. Continue to make your mom and your dad proud. And continue to do good in school and work hard. And I know you will, but we have... Uh, Actually, three high school graduates. Uh, Jacob's at the beach. Austin couldn't be here, uh, but Keelan's here. And we have three college graduates this year. Last year, we had a bunch of high school graduates. Uh, this year, I got more college graduates. So just want to let y'all know, Keelan, Jaden, Justin, Rose, we're proud of you guys. I know it's been a lot of work, a lot of hard, hard work, a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of hours spent studying and uh doing homework and other things that you had to do, cheerleading, <laughs> a lot a lot of work, but we're proud of you. I know there's probably been some tears <laughs> shed just because you're trying to cram everything in, but uh, you did it. You did it. And we're, this church is proud of you. I'm proud of you. So congratulations on your, on your hard work. Uh, but I just want to encourage you also, not only work hard with your work, I know some of you is continuing on, uh, and doing some other things, uh, Clemson, right? <laughs> yeah. So um, I know you can continue on. You can got a lot of work left to do, but work hard on your spiritual life also. Uh, just as hard as you work with your in your books, work hard on your spiritual life. Praying, reading your Bible. We just did a Bible study lesson just a little bit ago. Make sure you're studying the Bible. Make sure you're praying. Make sure you're being faithful to the house of God. Make sure you're working on your spiritual life, make sure you're growing spiritually, make sure you're having a close relationship with the Lord. But we're going to pray for you guys, and uh, if you ever need anything, don't hesitate to give me a call, preach or any call, anybody in this church a call, we'll help you as much as we can. Uh, I'm going to pray for you guys, and uh, we'll let you uh, go sit down. Lord, we love you. We thank you, God, for these graduates. Thank you, Lord, for Mason, for Keelan, for Justin, for Jaden, for Rose. Uh, Jacob, Austin, Lord, thank you, Lord, for them. Thank you, Lord, for uh, the growth that we've seen in these these young people, God. Lord, thank you, Lord, for uh, them working hard. Thank you, Lord, for being with them throughout their high school and, and college days and, and grammar school days. 
Lord, continue to lead, direct, and guide in their life, Lord. Be with them as they, as they get a job, as they start their career. Uh, be with them, lead, direct, and guide in their path. Help them to follow you. Do exactly, God, whatever it is, Lord, that you want them to do, and help them to be obedient to you. Thank you, Lord, for them. Help us as a church to stand behind them, to encourage them, uh, to help lead them in the, in the path, Lord, that you want them to go. We love you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody give them a hand one more time. Good to see in the Lord's house. Uh, we know that it is an exciting time. Uh, always a lot going on. We do appreciate all of our graduates. You continue to pray for them, continue to support them, and uh, we certainly, certainly are so very proud of each one of them. Uh, this morning, of course, we have a lot going on. Some there's always a lot going on at Fingerville. Uh, most of you, when you came in, uh, you would have received a slip of paper. Uh, we know that we begin Sunday school next week. And so we're deciding this morning whether Sunday school will begin at 9 a.m. or 9.30. You still got some of these, Seth? No? Okay. So if you did not receive one of these, you want to vote on what time Sunday school will start. Come here, Seth. Seth's going to come around and make sure you get one of these. Everybody in the choir, everybody get one. Okay. And uh, so Sunday school will start at 9 or go ahead and walk around. If, yep. Yeah. And so if you need one, here comes Seth. Just wave him down. Uh, so Sunday school will either start at 9 or 9.30. If it starts at 9, then Sunday school at 9, worship at 10. If at 9.30, Sunday school at 9.30, worship at 10.30. We know we used to meet at 9.45 and 10.45. And so this gives you an option uh, if you would like to vote on that. And we're going <coughs> to... He's passed these around. You've got those. You voted on them. And uh, whenever they take up the offering here just a little bit, they'll come around, take up the offering, and then they'll come around again and take up these slips of paper. And uh, so that gets that going. And then also we know that we have the Lord's Supper this morning. And so if you did not receive a offering, I mean not an offering, a Lord's Supper cup, uh, anybody need one? Raise your hand if you need one. Okay. And so well, I'll come around here in just a moment uh, with some of these. And uh, just to remind you, uh, there are two tabs. You first pull the first tab that exposes the wafer. The second tab exposes the juice, and uh, that gives you access there. Sometimes you want to pull them both at the same time, but it's a little bit more difficult. And uh, so do, do remember that. And then also, before I forget, uh, we know that nursery has started. And so we have Sandra in the nursery, and she's over the nursery, uh, but you need more than one person. And so the more people that we can get signed up, the, more, uh, the better that is. And so if we have some that would like to volunteer to help in the nursery on Sundays, it uh, would be greatly appreciated. And I do believe she has a sign-up sheet out front. All right, Brother Dave, if you have any announcements. Just right quick, uh, Bible school will be starting up next Sunday night. So next Sunday night, Bible school, uh, starting at 6.30 through uh, 9 o'clock, I believe. Uh, so it'll be Sunday night through uh, Thursday night, and Friday night will be our commencement service. So get your kids out here to Bible school Saturday, this coming Saturday, starting at 11 o'clock. We will have, is it 10 or 11? 
11 o'clock, I think. 11 o'clock, we'll have a uh, water day. Uh, so 11 to 2 o'clock, uh, bring kids out. We'll register the kids, start registering the kids at uh, water day. But also remember this, uh, you can actually register online this year. So if you go to FingervilleFirstBaptistChurch.org, you can register your kids online. Uh, so you can kind of uh, get rid of some of the confusion and, uh, of registering kids when they get here. So, uh, so try to do that beforehand if you can. If not, we'll register your kids uh, Saturday and also uh, at the start of Bible school on uh, Sunday night. So remember, uh, Saturday, water day, and Sunday we start Bible school at 6.30. So get your kids out here. Let's pray, guys. Lord, we love you, and we thank you, and we praise you, God, for your many blessings. Thank you, Lord, for uh, all you've done for us. Lord, be with this service, God. I pray your Holy Spirit will move and stir in a mighty way. Be with uh, Brother Gene as he leads the choir and all the, the music. Lord, I'll be with Preacher Andy as he brings the message. As we take these kids out back there for Children's Church, be with us. Lord, just I pray everything be done for your glory and your praise, Lord. And I pray if anybody here is lost, God, I pray uh, this will be the day that they give their heart and life to you. We love you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, right after church, uh, I need to meet with all the Bible school workers in the Gold Reachers class. So right after church, uh, meet in the Gold Reachers class, all the Bible school workers. Thank you. Everybody, please stand and turn to page 581, Proclatory Hymn, 581.
have all our children come down for the children's message if you would.
they will come from all nations, from every generation. Side by side they will march to the celestial city of Jehovah. And in perfect harmony they will begin humming a new song, a song composed by God, arranged for his children. As the save of grace approached the land of their dreams, the host of hell will step aside. Even the angels will be silent, for they cannot sing this new song. For it is a song reserved for voices. Who once cried out to the Redeemer, those washed in the blood of the Lamb? Yes, these are the Redeemed. choir comes down, I did want to mention uh, one thing uh, we received in the mail this week. It's from Buck Creek Baptist Church. I think most of you know where Buck Creek Baptist Church is. Uh, they are having a meeting uh, at their church Thursday, June the 10th, and the meeting will be from 6.30 to 8 in the evening. And uh, the two that will be there will be South Carolina House Representative Jonathan Hill and also Dr. Robert Jackson. And I think some of you here know Dr. Jackson, very good, godly man, a man that has devoted a lot of his life uh, to fight against abortion. And that's exactly what the meeting will be about. Uh, there's, a, there's an opportunity uh, in our state uh, to pass a law having to do with uh, abortion and uh, so if you would like to go there uh, they will have some information and uh, just how we can try to push this legislation through but I just wanted to share that with you and actually I'll put this down here in case you want to see uh, some more of that information uh, but just just keep that in mind of course we know we do need to be praying for our state for our nation there's always so much going on all righty well we know that with the COVID uh, that we have tried to shore up our foundations. And there's several things that we have done as a church of trying to shore up our foundations. Uh, we have tried to promote prayer. Uh, I still would love for that to be accepted more than it is. Uh, so I, there's no doubt there's still more work to be done. Uh, you know, we meet on Wednesday nights to pray. And I mean, just I would think God's people would love to come and pray together, but apparently not. But, but I, would love, I would love for God's people to gather and pray one for another. Foundational. There are some other things that we're trying to do foundational. One of those things is the Lord's Supper. And so we have began the first Sunday of the month uh, having the Lord's Supper. And uh, we do that every month now, just trying to shore up our foundations. We know that because of the COVID, uh, because of all the things that went on, we're going to have to rebuild. And, uh, you know, just my hope and my prayer 
uh, seeking the face of God, seeking the will of God, is trying to get some of those foundational things in place so that we can, when we rebuild, uh, that we have a firm foundation on which to stand. There's no doubt uh, that the church in America in a mess was before and uh, still is. Uh, we need God. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of, of God's people uh, that don't realize how much we need Him. And so whenever we have the Lord's Supper, and I, I'm sharing this just because I know we have some visitors, uh, I know there are some churches that only want their members to participate in the Lord's Supper. That's not what we teach or believe here at Fremont Baptist Church. We want all of God's family. Uh, so if you are a member of God's family, uh, if you have been born again, then we welcome you to take part in uh, the Lord's Supper. And we know that it is a very precious time, a very important time that we gather around His table. He has instructed us to do so. Uh, we know the Lord's Supper represents the atonement of Christ as the only means of our justification. The only way men can be saved is through Christ, His sacrifice, uh, what He accomplished on the cross. It's not by our works. It's not by our knowledge. It's not by who we know. Uh, it's only through Christ. And so accepting Him, looking to Him, leaning upon Him, uh, we know that's our only hope. And so when we gather around the Lord's Supper and we remember His sacrifice, we remember uh, what He accomplished for us, the pain that He endured, uh, He wants us to do so. And so He wants us to look back, consider his pain, consider his work, and that should encourage, encourage us and it should challenge us. And so whenever we take the Lord's Supper, it's a time of reflection. So I hope here this morning that you will reflect. Jesus died for you. He suffered for you more than we can ever imagine. Have you gloried in that lately? Does that impact your life? It should. It should impact our relationship with Christ and our relationship with one another. And so our hope and prayer is that as we, on a monthly basis, look back upon what Christ has done that will reflect. You know, it's designed to draw us closer to Him. And I asked you a question, you know, through all of this, are we drawing closer to Him? Or are we drifting away? There, there's, no, there's no standing still in the Christian life. You're either drawing closer, you're growing spiritually, or you're drifting away. You don't just reach a point and remain. It does not happen. We're still in the flesh. We still have battles. And so we're either growing or we're drifting farther away. Hopefully the Lord's Supper will help us and enable us and so let's pray. Lord, we do bow before you. We are grateful for this opportunity to partake in the Lord's Supper. Well, I ask that you would bring conviction upon our heart. Lord, help us to examine our life. Examine where we are spiritually. Examine the relationship with you. Lord, I pray that we would commit our hearts and lives completely to you, your will, your purpose. Lord, we do pray this prayer. Your most holy and blessed and perfect name. Amen. In Luke 22, it says, Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. He sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover that we may eat. They said unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare? And they said, Behold, when you enter into the city, there shall a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in. And you shall say unto the goodman of the house, The master saith unto thee, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished. They are make ready. So they went, they found as he had said to them, and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And so again, we know the Lord's Supper is given to celebrate in memory of his broken body and his shed blood. <clears throat> Isaiah 53, 5 says, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, 
and with his stripes we are healed. Lord, we thank you that you provided the pure, sinless body that was needed for this sacrifice. Lord, we're grateful that you was willing to allow that body to be beaten, to be pierced, to be broken for us. Lord, we know that you are our bread of life. Take the cup, remove the top layer, revealing the wafer, the bread. The Bible says in Matthew 26, verse 26, as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to the disciples. And he said, take, eat, this is my body. On the same night, our Lord took the cup and having blessed it, he gave to his disciples. And he says, this is my blood which was shed for you. And Lord, again, we thank you for being willing to shed your blood on our behalf. We know that blood was a perfect blood, sinless, spotless. And Lord, it provided for the perfect sacrifice that was needed. And so now you take the cup, pull back the second layer, revealing the juice. In Ephesians 1, it says, To the praise of the glory of His grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. First Corinthians 11 says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. And I hope that we realize how precious, how precious the Lord's Supper is, how meaningful it is, and that it is a part of what the Lord has instructed us to be a part of. All righty, 30-minute message in 10 minutes. Can we do it? We're going to try. We're going to try. Strengthen thy brethren. Luke 22, the Bible says in verse 31, the Lord speaking to Simon Peter, he says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. Without converted, strengthen thy brethren. Simon Peter, a man of boldness, a man of confidence. And we know that very quickly, very quickly, <laughs> very quickly, I'm sorry, I just saw that. I'm not going to tell you what it says right now. Very quickly, Peter would share his opinion. He's been known as the disciple with a foot-shaped mouth because he would often put his foot in his mouth, speak before he should. But one thing about Peter, he was very bold. Just listen to these very verses about Peter and his boldness his dedication, his commitment, and his mind. He was devoted to Christ regardless of the cost. We know that Peter asked Jesus uh, where he was going, and Jesus tells him that he cannot follow him. So in John 13, 37, Peter said to him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? He says, I will lay down my life for thy sake. Have you ever told anybody that? I would give my life for you. That's what Peter told Jesus. We know that Jesus tells that everybody, all the disciples would be offended because of what would happen. And in Mark 14, 29, Peter said in him, although all shall be offended, yet will not I. I'm, I'm confident. He says, I'll not, but they can say what they want to do. They can be who they want to be. I'll not be offended. Jesus tells Peter, he looks at him and says, boy, you're going to deny me three times. You know what Peter's response? He got even more excited. He began to speak even more with more conviction. 
He said, if I should die with thee, he said, I will not deny thee in any wise. And at that point, they all said that. I mean, this is just hours before the crucifixion. And here, Simon Peter is saying, I will not deny thee. I will die. I think Peter truly meant it. He was very confident. Jesus tells Peter that Satan has desired to sift him as wheat. Luke twenty two thirty three, 33, and he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both in the prison and to death. Not only did he have words, but we had, he had some action behind it too, didn't he? Remember last week we've been going through those chapters before the cross and the gospel of John. And you remember whenever Judas had betrayed Jesus and that mob was there to take Jesus back, what did Simon Peter do? He didn't run. He didn't deny. He pulled out the sword. Tried to cut the man's head off is what most people believe. Ended up cutting his ear off. Cut his ear off. John 18, 10, then Simon Peter having a sword, he drew it, smote the high priest, cut off his right ear. (laughs) Most commentators say they believe he was trying to cut his head off. He was ready to defend Jesus. I'll go to you to prison. I'll go to death. It doesn't, you know, that's his confidence. But in that same chapter, John 18, we have Peter's catastrophe. And we looked at that just a little bit last time. We know that Simon Peter denied Jesus three times. Just listen to these verses in John 18. The Bible says in John 18, verse 15, Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. The disciple was known to the high priest. He went in with Jesus into the palace, the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without, then went out. The other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, brought Peter in, and said to the damsel that kept the door, Art thou not also one of the man's disciples? Number one, he said, I am not. Denied him one time. Verse 18, the servants, officers stood there who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold. They warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them, and they warmed themselves. Verse 24, Hannes had sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Simon Peter stood, warmed himself. They said to him, Art thou not also one of the disciples? Boom, twice, denied it again. One of the servants of the high priest being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off. Uh Uh-oh, he's getting close now. Somebody that knows the guy that he assaulted said, You look familiar. Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Peter denied him three times. Three times. And before we throw Peter under the bus, which is what most people want to do, I do want to point out that he was there. (laughs) He was there. He just had cut off a man's ear. Jesus was being persecuted. Simon Peter could have ran. I mean, his life was in danger. That's why he's denying, you know, but he was there. So I'm not completely throwing Peter under the bus, but he did deny him. And that's another whole message too. Why did he do it? Fear, confusion. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why Peter would have denied him three times after being so determined, after being so committed, but it was a catastrophe in spite of all his confidence. Here, Peter denied him three times. Most of us, if we have someone that we're depending on, we have someone that we're committed to, they turn their back on us, they deny us, they disappoint us, what we want to do? We want to kick them to the curve, right? (laughs) Aren't you glad Jesus doesn't do that? So we got Peter's coaching. A little while later... After the crucifixion, Peter discouraged, distraught, frustrated, aggravated, depressed. He says, I go a fishing. I got no problem with that because I like to go a fishing too. But he went a fishing. But Jesus was not through with him. And we have that wonderful passage of Scripture in John 21. The Bible says in verse 15, when they had died, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Once. He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he said, Feed my lambs. 
And he said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, love thou me? And he said to him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he said to him, Feed my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Feed my sheep. Three times Simon Peter denied Jesus. Three times Jesus supported Simon Peter. <laughs> what a God we serve. Amen. What a God we serve. And that's another whole message. Jesus, we know that there's different words. Brother David touched on that this morning in our lesson. The Greek word for love, we have one word. We love chocolate, we love our wife, we love football. Different levels of love. We use the same word, they have different words. They have agape, that unconditional love. They have phileo, that brotherly love. I mean, it's a deep love, but it's not as deep as the unconditional agape. When Jesus looks at Peter's those first two times, he says, do you agape me? Do, do you love me unconditionally? Simon Peter says, yes, Lord, I phileo you. You're, you're, you're very important to me. Simon Peter, looking back on his failures, he could not arise to agape. The third time that Jesus asked him, do you love me, he came down to Peter's level. He said, do you phileo me? Simon Peter said, yes, I do phileo you. Aren't you glad that we serve a God that forgives, that reaches, that ministers? Simon Peter, man of confidence, had a catastrophe. And then the Lord ministered to him. The Lord ministered to him. I know that we've got some graduates here today. Life is tough, and there will be failures. But don't allow those failures to defeat you, discourage you, to overwhelm you. We know that we can overcome. But it is very difficult to overcome alone. We need each other. We need each other in this church. We need each other in our homes and our families. Thought I could do it. I couldn't do it. It's been 10 minutes. Give me five more. We need each other. Jesus reached out to Simon Peter. Who were we reaching out to? In our small group Tuesday night, we had a wonderful small group Tuesday night. Brother Ray was mentioning Adrian Rogers. I don't know if any of you ever listened to Adrian Rogers, one of my favorite preachers. Kenneth Ryden said Adrian Rogers had the voice of God. I heard him say that several times. And so I stole this from Adrian Rogers this week as he preached on Barnabas. Trying to make a difference, Barnabas, Adrian Rogers challenged his congregation, and I challenge you this morning to think of five different people. Five different people. He said, find a needy person and enrich them. There's a lot of needy people. When's the last time you helped somebody that was in need? Financially, emotionally, spiritually, physically. Find somebody that's in need and enrich them. Find somebody that's lonely and include them. There's a lot of lonely people. There's, there are people that are in crowds, and yet they're still lonely. Nobody to connect to. And, and he, he, he wants you to think of a name, and I do too. You know somebody that's needy? Minister to them. You know somebody that's lonely? Is the name coming to your mind? Find someone that's misunderstood and affirm them. There's a lot of folks that are misunderstood, a lot of folks that are cast down. They need our help. Find somebody that's undeveloped and disciple them. Find someone that's failing and restore them. Those are five names. Can you find five people? Somebody, somewhere, I can tell you, I've already started on my list. I mean, it's not something that you're going to do just in one day. I've already started on my list. Find somebody that's needy, lonely, misunderstood, undeveloped, somebody that's failed. And you know, I love alliteration. Not the best at it, but I, it helps me. 
to these five people. You find somebody that's needy, give them some help. There's a lot of folks that need help. Find one person, I challenge you. Find one person and give, some, give that person some help. Find some, somebody that's lonely and give them hope. Tell you what, folks, I've got hope. <laughs> I've got hope! <laughs> i got it so much it tells me again and again. Y'all heard that, didn't you? I don't know why this thing echoes, but it does. I got hope! <laughs> That's how much hope I got. It just keeps on telling me. Find somebody, give them help. Find somebody else, give them hope. Find somebody that's misunderstood and give them a hedge. Some folks need somebody to come along and help them. Come along beside them and strengthen them. They're trying. They're struggling. They need somebody to come along and give them some strength. Be that hedge to give them some protection. Find somebody that's undeveloped and be their hero. I can tell you there's been many times since I've pastored this church that I've put people stand in this church and they'll tell about somebody that impacted their life. This person helped me to minister the way that I'm ministering. This person helped me to be the person that I am. But you know what the problem is? That process has not continued. Someone helped you, but who are you helping? You, you can name somebody that helped you be who you are to fill the position, the place, the power, all, you know, to help you be who you are. Who have you helped? Whose hero are you? I've got some heroes. WK Matters. <laughs> He's my hero. And there's others that invested in me. Who, whose hero are you? <laughs> give them some, somebody, give them help. Find somebody, give them hope. Find somebody to be that hedge. Find somebody, give them a hero. And find somebody that's failed, faltered, and give them healing. There's a lot of folks that need healing. God wants to use us to do that. And so I challenge you to be a hunter. Find those people in need. The Bible, that said to me, the Bible teaches us that faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. How's your faith? You say you believe. You, you say you believe in God, do you? <laughs> what kind of works are backing it up? We are not saved by works, but salvation does work. If we are saved, we will be serving some way or somehow, some form. I'm going to ask you to stand where the gene comes. I challenge you to find somewhere, somehow, someplace, somebody to minister to. God's given us life. He's given us breath. He's given us opportunity. He's given us grace. He's given us mercy. He's given us love. He has given so much. He has done so much. In the time that we begin to give back. Time that we give back. Lord, we bow before you. Just ask that you give us grace, mercy, strength, and guidance. Put your hand upon this church. Lord, I know that we stand in great need. We need you. I just pray that your will would be accomplished. Well, we pray this in your name. Amen. If you need to bow on this altar, you come forward. Please stand turn to page 308. 308. Do you know the Lord? Are you confident where you will spend eternity? He gave his life. Challenge you to call upon him, to look to him, to trust in him.
somebody somewhere and give them Jesus <laughs> that's what he's called us to do I challenge you each one of you don't pass it off to somebody else allow God to use you all right with a vote of 42 to 27 42 to 27 so for those 27 please Please, get up early next Sunday. <laughs> Nine o'clock. <laughs> I'm sorry. For those that wanted 9.30, I'm sorry. It's just 30 minutes. It's just 30 minutes. So next, next Sunday, Sunday school will start at 9 and worship will start at 10. 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. So I hope to see you then, be inviting, encouraging others to come out. But for now, I'm not going to tell you to find a piece of chicken. I'm not going to tell you to find a hot, hot dog. I'm going to tell you to find somebody. Find somebody and help them. Love them. Serve them. Make a difference in their life. Be what Jesus has called you to be. Mm -hmm.